Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp. I got Gary Gillette here to talk about the Missoula City Band, of course, and the release of his book about the history of the Missoula City Band and the uh, very first band dating as far back as the 1860s. So he'll talk about that and more as we gear up into the summer season with the Missoula City Band. But let's kick things off with a little bit of weather. I got Flagship Friday today as well and a whole bunch of other things, including your art guide for First Friday. It is currently 49 degrees out, outside. There's a little rain, or as I like to call it, Lieutenant Rain. Um, you're going to have flood warnings until about noon today. Your highs going to be 60. Your lows are going to be in the 40s. Saturday, you're looking at 70s and 80s degree um, temperatures happening, so it's going to be really warm on Sunday. But then things are going to get uh, scattered showers once again. So, hey, if you were working this week and you had to stay indoors, great. Um, he, he avoided the hail that happened uh, just uh, the other day, uh, which happened yesterday around uh, 2, 2.30, and I got a nice little video of the hail. So here's this. Outside of... Man, look at all that hail. It's ridiculous. Quite the most in the other uh, the other day for sure, but the one thing I did uh, did do a nice little uh, time lapse capture of the the bird uh, the osprey uh, up at the nest. So I have a nice little clip from this. Um, of course, uh, there is no audio to this. Uh, the bird it starts to notice some of the uh, hail coming down. It starts picking up um, the heavy hail that started here in the downtown Missoula area. Starts uh, invading the nest. Um, of course, one year the uh, osprey lost their eggs to the hail, but hopefully these uh, eggs are well protected. But here's a time lapse moving forward, going through the rain. Yeah, that, that bird had to go through a lot, no cover, protecting its eggs. But of course, by the end of it, it seemed like everything was fine, but the bird is definitely a little more shook up from it. Okay, in other news, uh, if you haven't been paying attention, in the state, after years of battling federal regulations, Helena Valley hemp farmer Kim Phillips has been um, granted a contract that will allow her to use federally controlled water in an ir to irrigate her crop. The decision was made just days uh, to spare, as the last day for Phillips to plant variable crop was June 1st, today. So. Imagine that you want to grow hemp and you get a, a pilot project program through the federal government, but unfortunately, uh, you want to you need the water to water your plants and you want to use federally controlled water, but then you have to, from there, you have to get them to regulate it. So through over a whole year of working through this and trying to get through this, the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation prohibited the use of federally controlled water to irrigate controlled substances such as hemp, which is closely related to marijuana. Of course, as of now, Phillips will be using the water from Canyon Ferry River, which is federally controlled, but is now giving the, her permission to grow this crop. In national news, of course, next Tuesday is a big day. Um, you guys get out there and vote for your uh, representative uh, for the primary elections because this will determine who will be going against uh, John Tester in this upcoming Senate race um, and also who will be uh, going against uh, J Greg Gianforte in this uh November race as well for U.S. House. Um, many, uh, there are 435 House seats that are up for grabs. Uh, 218 seats are needed to have a majority over the House. Six, uh, about 33, uh, let's see, I, okay, 33 out of the 100 Senate, Senate seats are, which are including the U.S. Senator John Tester, will be running against the winner of the next Tuesday's GOP. So there's 33 seats that are up for election this year as well. Um, and of course, um, here's a couple statistics. You know, that, like the Democrats are saying that they're thinking that there's going to be a big blue wave. And uh, Alabama U.S. Senator just this year, uh, um, Doug Jones, won. And they think that this is a good momentum to move forward with the Democrats taking over the House and the Senate and moving forward with that. But on the other hand, many people are starting to see some of the positivity of the tax reform that the Trump administration and the House has um, seen to improve. So um, with approval rating now going up for Trump to 40, which is one of the, uh, one of the higher it's been in the last uh, 
two years he's been in office. So uh, there's still a lot of variables in, into play. So um, if you want to learn more information, you can always go to um, uh, MissoulaVotes.com to see who's going to be running and what's going to be happening. Um, you, and, of course, to find out more information as well. It's the county website, co.missoula.mt.us, not ci.missoula.mt.us. So you can find out that and more. But I'm keeping Gary Gillette lo uh, waiting in the wings, so I'm going to throw it to an art clip. And when I come back, I'm going to have Gary Gillette on here to talk about Missoula City Band's uh, history. <laughs> Hey everybody, we're back here with Gary Gillette, who is the former Central High School uh, band teacher. <laughs> Thank but, you. Uh, but first and foremost, he is the uh, Missoula City Band director, <laughs> That's and it, he uh, every summer you do the city band. And this year, um, you wrote a book. I can. Well, in my <laughs> retirement, thanks for not saying the old Central <laughs> band teacher. Uh, even though I, at times I, I feel a little old, uh, I. Uh, I retired from public school teaching, but I still conduct the city band. Of and course. Was, in my retirement, the first project, the first big project I took on was the history of the city band. I've been I've been dink, dinking around with it for years. You know, in the summer times, I we do a composition, and I I I'd go down to the library. That's before we had. Uh, uh, the, the advantage of uh, the Missoula now is all digital online. You can do it from your home. Mm -hmm. uh, no, not anymore, man. Uh, back yeah, they in go the back old to days. The microfiche? Yep, yep. Me and the microfiche down <laughs> in the Missoula Public Library, man. <laughs> and you uh, got to go fish for those articles? I'm oh, yeah, sorry, that's yeah. a terrible pun. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was fun, and it, 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 caught, my, it caught my attention. So, and and it's, not a fairly new, it's not a fairly new concept with the whole digital age. No. Nah. Because, like, I remember I went down with my dad to that, and he was just like, I don't want to see what happened in Missoula when I was born. Yeah, that's right. And I found that, you know, I did, you know, one of my sons, something happened on the day that my son, that my older son was born, and I even put it in the book. It was a bit selfish, but it was something that was, that was notable, the band, I forget what it was. So I spent a year in, in uh, um, uh, research and then uh, uh, and then I started trying to write. Oh my god! Well, being like the, like you, <laughs> not... you 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 know how to talk, <laughs> <laughs> and it, this is fairly autobiographical as well because you kind of like I would think that you'd approach it probably from your own perspective as city band director since yeah. 1992. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you kind of throw it in in about what you've experienced with some of the past directors. And yeah, but I tried not to. Uh, so the perspective. Uh, of being a band director helps understand what had happened with it. Uh, I just started telling stories. I had writer's block for some time trying to figure out how am I going to, uh, uh, how do I begin? I just can't start <laughs> in 1865. That was all way too boring. I, so I started telling stories, the most ridiculous and uh, interesting stories, and then worked out from that. I think it's always funny that when you when you talk to people and you say, I was like, okay, don't give that man a microphone. Um, if you want to uh, shut up a guy who uh, you don't give a microphone to, give him a pencil. Like, and if you want to <laughs> shut up somebody who uh, 
with a pencil who writes too much, give them a microphone. That's usually how it works out because they a lot of people speak with their uh, with their written word. A lot of people speak. Oh, okay. Well, I I ended up doing much of my writing with uh, uh, voice to text on the computer. Someone turned me on to it. That's awesome. And uh, I uh, once I got a hang of it. Uh, that's what I started doing. I just started tell, talking, it's telling stories. It's really cool. And then I had to go back and edit. Oh my gosh, you know, the, uh, the software isn't anything, uh, uh, well, on my Chromebook computer. Uh, the software <laughs> is, <laughs> was rather small, uh, so it was trying to figure out what words I was saying and the you know, punctuation and all that, but still, I was able in, oh, an hour to spew out a story. Well, it'd take me days to edit it. Uh, and then I was wise enough to, to uh, have three different editors. So I'm going to have to start acting and speaking more intelligently. Because you're a writer. Because, <laughs> because people who read the book and know that, hey, he just had that sucker ghost written. That's why I, I, I had really good, uh, good folks that helped me edit the book. That's great. And what is the book called? The Missoula City Band Stories in Time. Cool. It and began course, as the history of the Missoula City Band. It sounded way full. So we do have a picture. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can bring it up a there little bit. There you go. We can pretend that's the book right there. Because that's the, the book, book is cover. in print. That's right. Being printed right now. That's awesome. <laughs> so uh, you're self publishing? Uh, no. I have a publisher. You have a publisher. I have a publisher and editors and. A, a sweet, no, uh, uh, me in my living room on my Chromebook computer, that's what was my office. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, he, he also happens to be an, a, a, a band parent, a former band parent. So Stonydale Press out of Stevensville, who deals in historical and hunting books. Wow. Though I've got no hunting stories in this one. It's all, all historical. Yeah, I mean, because every time <laughs> you represent uh, Montana in a book, it's always about the river that runs yeah, through it. Yeah, that's it, man. All the thing about hunting and all, all that stuff. Never something that's uh, basically been a part of the city of Missoula since it's, it, before so, it was considered be, a city. Before it was a city. Before we were a state. State at Missoula before we were Missoula Mills just a little when Warden showed up and and had a little log cabin out by Grant Creek there was a band <laughs> there was a band I, I, I just like imagine like you with the microphone it's like poor Warden was out there in his cabin there was a band there was a band man. before the bridge was washed away in the big flood there was there a band. was a band and we celebrated uh, you know it was a sign of of civilization, <laughs> that that there, there were musicians there, and when there was something going on, there had to be a program. And well, who led the program? The band did. <laughs> That's what they did. Everything that happened in Missoula, the band was there. And some years, the the, the press d d didn't have anything to write about except the band. <laughs> So, it, and we'd like go you, back. you would say that um, back in the day when they were, when the city band held concerts, they, were, they held it on the Missoula Courthouse lawn, right? Yep, yep, yep. For years and years, and then they would build a, a little band, you know, or a gazebo, and then we'd outgrow it, and then the you know Missoula grew. And they had to tear down the, the band jail because they needed to build that god awful looking <laughs> extension on the courthouse. And we Sorry. Know, we all know oh. we all know that one. Oh man, what an ugly! <laughs> and who come up with that? <laughs> A.J. Gibson rolling over in his grave. What well, they tore down the A.J. Gibson band. There used to be a, 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 a complimentary oh. band shell, you know, a gazebo right there, uh, designed by the same guy who designed the courthouse. They tore it down, built that abomination, and then <laughs> built, <laughs> built a different band shell that quickly uh, the band outgrew, and there was all kinds of, where, where are we going to go, what are we going to do? And then so the band would just play in the steps or play in the lawn of the courthouse, and they tried some different parks. They thought about going out Greeno back when they had the grizzly bear. Uh, oh, uh, right. Uh, uh, I'm sure the bear would have loved it. Oh, <laughs> gee. <laughs> serenade that caged up grizzly bear. Uh, and they finally decided to move it out to Bonner, Bonner Park. Mm -hmm, which you know it as today. Yeah. But of course, you're not only just talking about the book, you, we want to do a little plugging of the Missoula City Band, which starts on June 13th. It is. It does every uh, subsequent Wednesday until August 12th. Subsequential. Good going, boy. Oh, right. August 12th. Got to August 15th. for my own show. All the way through <laughs> August 15th. So uh, the, the, the first major concert of the year will be this book release of the history of the band. But what it really is about is about the band. And it's, it'll be every Wednesday. I think every begin. I think we begin rehearsals. <laughs> God, I'm ready for it, but I'm just uh, you know, dealing with the calendar. Do I? Did I turn over the page today? It's today, June 1. 
Yeah. It is. Yeah. Okay. So that's when my that's when my job begins. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I've been doing rehearsals like in two weeks. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the first concert, I'm going to buy some time for the for the city band so we can rehearse, and the Missoula Big Band is going to play the preseason, the preseason special like we did last year on awesome. June 13th. But the but the kickoff for the major c series is June 20th, and uh, I'll be out signing. I'll be out signing my book uh, after and before the, uh, <laughs> and the program, the program will be historically uh, designed. So uh, they'll be doing tunes from ooh, the band in 1910 and the band in 1920 and it, those kind of things. Twilo Wolf is going to come back nice. and sing with us. Uh, uh, we're doing a couple of the famous Montana songs that uh, uh, are associated with Missoula and or Montana. Awesome. And then every Wednesday through August 15th. Cool. Um, is there anything you want to say? Is there like a theme for this year's city band? <laughs> Bigger and better. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's all it's all built around the book, and I can't help but but uh, uh, be picking gems as the year goes on of these tunes that that have been lost and uh, and now found. Uh, 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 the state song and the song that seems to be the alma mater for uh, University of Montana, oh. though it's not. It's not officially the alma mater song, but there was a, of course it, it, it was a state song for a bit. I found out in the research. The research is just so much fun uh, it, following these ideas and threads, and still, you know, every week I've got somebody else that I meet up with and find out something different or new or find a family connection. That was, th those are the, the neatest stories are people that are still alive right now whose great great grandfather conducted a city band back in the 20s, that kind of deal. Yeah, and then of course oh. you meet the, like, the grandson of the yeah. third clarinet. Yeah, walking into, the, <laughs> walking into the, uh, the Montana club, the old Heidel house, that picture, being a good band boy yourself, you, 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 do you, do you, do you know the picture I'm talking about? Uh, the third booth on the left. You're walking in a Montana club. The third booth on the left, before, oh. right there before oh, the yeah. bathrooms, there's a picture of the city band. Well, I've been enamored with that picture for years. That's a good excuse to go uh, have something to eat. Uh, <laughs> and I walked by there one time with a colleague, your old choir teacher, uh, Nancy Labby. Oh. And she said, I've got relatives in that picture. And I went, ah, the heck you do. <laughs> By the end of the night, I had pictures. I had three more pictures to uh, uh, of her family, and there's there's two two of her relatives in that picture. And I connected those relatives up to somebody else's relative, old Dickinson Music. That was before your time, but there used to be a music store. There was a music store in 1880, run by Dickinson. And it's only been the last 20 years that there hadn't been. Finally, that line of Dickinson's wow. uh, petered out. But they were the music store in Missoula forever, and they played in the city band. Oh, there's, so, there's so many stories. There's so many rich stories. <laughs> and of course, Gary, Je Gary Gillette will share them all with you. <laughs> I will. Most likely during all the city band concerts. Maybe you come out there, read a passage from his book. It's like, this is a passage from my book, now on sale. <laughs> hockey guy, I, I, I'm afraid it's going to turn into like the Rosencrantz project. Always out there hockey. Because the, I, I had to buy a lot of books. Again, the, the difference between getting 500, well, you can't get anything less than 500. And I wasn't going to get ebooks. Could you imagine all my blue hairs dealing with ebooks? <laughs> I can't. So I've got real books, real books, paper. And uh, I had to buy a thousand of them. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All proceeds going hey, to the Missoula City Band. Missoula City Band, people in Missoula, <laughs> if they want to support the Missoula City Band. Look, I can book. give you something besides entertainment. It's a thousand books, but there's 80,000 people in Missoula. <laughs> so I say uh, it's That's like 8%. Half a, half a book per family. Yeah, only eight, I guess eight percent of people can get the book out of Missoula, and then everyone what? else is gonna be like, "Where'd you get that book?" Ah, I'll have to do a reprint. Yeah, <laughs> or photocopy. No, no reprint. All right. Well, good luck, Gary. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Hey, every Wednesday, Bonner Park starting on June whenever it is. It's a couple weeks, June thirteenth. Mm -hmm. Cool. We'll see you there, Scotty. Yep. All right. Uh, we'll be right back right after this. So, a little history about street medics. Street medics actually came about in 1964 during the American Civil, African American Civil Rights Movement. Um, they were organized as the medical presence 
the, med the Medical Presence Project, and they eventually became the Medical Community for Human Rights. And what they discovered, and they tended to show up, they, were, they would show up at protests, white doctors in white coats, and go stand with the people who were, um, who were being subject to police violence. What they discovered is that it was actually a way of self-defense. Police were less likely to be violent with doctors there, um, watching them and people were inspired and encouraged by knowing that somebody was going to take care of them if they got hurt. Noticing that I'm starting to think negatively about uh, situations that are happening um, and that's a great, that's, that's a really important one to notice because that's something that we actually have control over. Um, some things like intense emotion, um, it's, it's hard to change very quickly. Um, notice and just change, but if we can catch our negative spiraling down thinking, we, could, we can actually step in and reframe that thinking, um, which can have an impact on how we feel. Um, so that's a great um, thing to notice and where we can apply some strategy too. So we've been working on a project we call it the Digital Center of Excellence. We've had a pilot project, and it's more than just imaging, you know, it's a digital encoding. and the pilot project identified a couple things. They took a hundred most requested boxes, which happened to be education boxes. I would have thought they would have been litigation, but education. And as they were completing the pilot project, I kind of asked them, you know, what did you learn? And they learned that they could digitize almost anything, books, big maps. They also learned that teachers like to use a lot of staples. <laughs> And so they meticulously would remove these staples. They didn't replace them all, but they realized they could keep the quality of the documents. So our hope is, and with technology someday, you'll be sitting at your desk, if you're uh, drafting a trust document, it will be digitized and stored immediately and, and for historical purposes retained. Uh, one of my um, curiosities uh, and objections has been meta art, and I think it because it always seemed to be a, a one-liner, and I was curious about the etymology of the word meta, and I found it um, kind of enlightening. So meta means in the midst of, or in pursuit or quest, uh, changing places with, and transcending. Uh, so I think that relates and val validates conceptual art and that its effort is to transcend, change places with, or uh, pursue of the quest of uh, contemporary art, what it is. Um, so today's art is not just to be looked at and it can't be contained, would be the lesson from that. Some contemporary examples of other uh, challenging conceptual art um, is this work by Joseph Kasuth, uh, who, uh, a piece called One in Three Chairs uh, from 1965, which involved a photograph of a chair, the actual object itself, and then a dictionary definition of chair. And you can see uh, Baldessari is very much in that line lineage when he's thinking about how language and image uh, work as coded systems and symbols to communicate with us. Hey guys, welcome back. Those are some of the new programs that are going to be airing this weekend on MCAT. Right now, here are some of the things that are going to be airing in your theaters starting today. And that includes another movie where a bunch of, uh, um, basically a middle-aged guy tries to reclaim his glory of his younger days by basically doing some intense slapstick in this movie called Action Point. From the creator of Jackass and all those movies where you're getting too old to see a middle-aged man kill themselves with stunts comes... Action Point, a movie that wants to be a modern slapstick but replaces it with dick-punching jokes. Johnny Knoxville stars in this movie to hopefully reignite a generation of adrenaline junkies. Up next, we got, from what we see in the poster, um, and the title, Adrift. Uh, I can assume it's a romance, survival movie um, with uh, actors because usually movies have actors in it. It starts off as a cheeky, flirty, put into real life, life or death situation where two good looking people are sent adrift. Uh, they hate each other for the situation they are in, but come together to survive and 
the this the way this movies looks, uh, the, the the guy probably die in a Jack Titanic kind of way. Moving on, uh, before I even look at the synopsis, I assume it's packed with criminals who dress like their animal metaphors, and they are in America, and the movie is called American Animal. Um, it has a cast of people who want to uh, pull off a bank heist because they saw it in a movie. Okay, I did peek at the synopsis just a little bit. I'm getting pretty good at predicting these movies, though. Uh, okay, so that's pretty much it for pre-critic. I got a brand new Flexure Friday video for you guys from C.S. Porter. So when I come back, I'm going to talk about some y your art guide for your week. So stay with me. When I get out of here, you'll be in so much trouble. So much trouble. What are you looking at? Oh. Wait, who farted? That was me. Uh, I don't want to be a part of this anymore. Well, you have to. Or you'll get hit in the face with a book! That teacher's lounge. What a beauty. I heard there's food in here. Let's go raid it. I've seen better. Oh, cool! A new grand soda machine! Oh, cool! A coffee machine! I've never had coffee before. Uh, this is like the only good thing here. Too bad I don't have any more That's depressing. back let's talk about some of the art that's going to be happening in missoula so here is your art guide for first friday kicking things off at the radius gallery if you guys are planning on going out about all these events start at five and they go about till eight so i might go a little bit later if you know the uh curator of the art gallery um get an early start on the festivities, stop by the Radius Galleries and see our third annual Ceramics Invitational. The work of 13 artists demonstrates why Christie's Auction House called the Clay Arts the hottest new art market. Of course, the, sh uh, the show will present a snapshot of what's happening in ceramics today. You don't want to miss it. And the uh, exhibit ends on June 9th. So um, a lot of these exhibits are... Uh, are just are brand new but with this one sometimes they uh, take out the art e exhibit in the middle of the month not necessarily putting it uh, at the end of the month but of course um, our next one is gonna happen at the Missoula Art Museum 
Um, this one is called um, Interference Effect by John Be Baldsari. Sorry about that. Uh, Bald uh, John Bald Delsari, uh, selections of collections of Jordan D. Schneider's and his family's foundation, their big uh, art contributors for the Missouri Art Museum, conviewed an extraordinary ex exhibit um, featuring him, selections from the collections from them and his family. Of course, the really cool thing about the MAM, they also have a a reception and gallery talk at 7 p.m. So if you guys uh, go around the art walk, wander around, the man might be the last place to go for a nice little educational art talk at 7 p.m. tonight. Um, friends Along the Trail. Artist Shop is hosting Friends Along the Trail by Barbara Liss. Uh, sculpted con uh, concrete faces can be enjoyed in an outside environment as well as inside, wherever friends uh, comfort or inspire you. And this is gonna be at the Artist Shop. Up next, we got Rockscapes. First Friday and for the month of June, showcasing Rockscapes for its first time, Larry Blackwood's composition of rock forms are abstract but recognizable, which give you, uh, which give your mind something to anchor to. They have a sensation, uh, they have a sensual and emotional feel. Larry is self-taught and has been uh, photographing for over 40 years. His exhibits regularly in museums and galleries around the country and recently in China as well. So you can check that out. It's going to be at Four Ravens Gallery um, starting at 5. Um, here's some colorful designs. This is April Worley. Uh, this is going to be at Lake Missoula Tea Company. Um, they have music. It's a vibrant artwork, music, and free tea f uh, for June. Uh, first Friday from 5 to 8 p.m. April Worley, a local artist, will display her colorful collages that re revolve around identify. Through her work, you will also see her interest in the architecture and environmental rela relative to culture. Art Quilts, 111 Boutique and Art Space. This show features over 25 works by Missoula's Teresa Jacobs, a multimedia artist who has been creating art quilts for over three decades. And the hours are Monday through Friday from 10 to 6, but of course, first Friday, they're going to be doing this from 5 to 8 p.m., so this will be at the 111 Boutique and Art Space. Up next, we got Monique Bellitz, and this is going to be at the Frontier Space. Um, and it's um, Monique Bellitz is an assistant professor of art and uh, art is a pr uh, assistant professor of art at Doan University of Nebraska. Um, as a landscape artist working in mixed media, Monique is influenced by the presentation of this of the land, its history, people, and conflicts. Join us for the first Friday in June. I need glasses. Um, then we got uh, Arrowhead Leaf EP. This is going to be at Mon Montgomery Distillery. This is uh, this isn't necessarily art, but this is going to be a reading that I'm going to be doing, and it's the debut of not myself, but no one else. Uh, these are postcards with album art and download code will be available for purchase. Blah blah blah. Come hang out in Montgomery Distil Distillery, grab a drink, and take a listen at not myself, but no one else. Up next, we got Elvis is in the building, which is going to be at the Gallery 709 inside Montana Art and Framing. This is happening from June 1st today all the way to the 29th. The salt mine artist Bev Gluckert, Stephen Gluckert, Kathleen Henry Polo, this, and so many other artists. And you can find out more by going to montanaart.com to learn about Montana Art and Framing at the 709 off of Ronan Street. Into the light. First Friday, Berkshire Hathaway is doing, usually does art and they are uh, hosting this one um, from artist Judith Wright, the show Into the Light. The artistic signature has always been vibrant, intense color. Color combined with the light creates an energy that excites our eyes, expands our sensibilities, and stirs our hearts. May you find the collection of contemporary acrylics a path of leading to expanded horizons and an opening your creative senses. Up next, we got Habitat by at Bernice's Bakery. Um, this is new works by Adrian Langer. Uh, the body of works uh, explores the rel relationships that plants, animals, and people have with one another uh, while coexisting in a beautiful and unique habitat that we call home in Montana. So this is a special focus uh, at risk and endangered species and how the human population can influence the landscape. The artist uses mixes of pencil markers and acrylic pink on watercolor paper and wood panels. And this is going to be at the Bernice's Bakery. Here's another one, and it reads, Reception for 20 Years, a Clay Studio re Retrospective. So if you read this, it might be a little small on this screen, 
Um, but it is at the Clay Studio, and they're celebrating 20 years of a retrospective. The Clay Studio of Missoula is celebrating 20 years of community in Clay. This June, they are hosting a retrospective exhibit featuring around three dozen artists. Uh, 20 years, of course, wow, they say this like five times in their uh, synopsis, but of course, the exhibit highlights the development of the artist residency program and the staff that has been key in helping steer the Clay Studio of Missoula into growing community clay center that serves the Missoula community and beyond. And the exhibit will be on starting today until the June 29th. Um, and then finally, this is the last one, I promise. This is going to be Rashid Abdul Ghaffur. And um, I totally butchered that, but this is going to be uh, Sarita, Sarita Tana Studios. Uh, Saritana, sorry, Saritana Studios. And this is the wrong side of the tracks for an evening of new works by uh, Ghaffur. Uh, which is going to this is 801 Sherwood uh, Street, Missoula, Montana. It's experimental music and un unconventional entertainment. Uh, of course, for those of all your f those are all your first Friday guide for M Friday and beyond as we dive into a new month of art and creativity and possibly new fires of creativity and forest fires. Uh, anyways, but that pretty much does it for everything art related. If you want to learn more information, go to MissoulaEvents.net. But I'm going to throw to an art clip video and I'm going to dive into all your uh, art events right after this. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Let me talk about some Missoula events that are happening in the city of Missoula. I just want to um, actually prelude to a couple other informational idea, a couple informational items that I want to talk about just before I jump into events, and that includes MCAT. MCAT is hosting summer camps this year as well, which will be happening the end of June, the last full week in June. It it um, you can sign up online at MCAT.org. Um, Summer camp registration is easy. All you got to do is click on the picture of the kids, click on any summer camp registration, but of course you can always go to how do I register for summer camps and it will bring you to a nice link to uh, sign up your kids who are age 9 to 13. And of course we do have a 13 and up camp called the zombie camp which happens the last week in July. So you can check out those and more by going to MCAT.org, but also you can check out my morning show and all my past interviews, including my interview with Gary Gillette, by going to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice to meet you right out twice. You could subscribe to me on YouTube, like me on Facebook, and follow me on Twitter. Basically, three different ways of doing the exact same thing on three different social media platforms. Um, I accept Bitcoin. I don't know what that means, but I accept it. Anyways. <laughs> I'm not funny. Um, moving on. Uh, starting today, as early as this morning, Mi uh, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena, Mismo Gymnastics, and Roots Acro Sports Center are all your indoor fun on this rainy, possibly kind of wet day for your kids. So if you want to have your kids do some play and get active, um, these are the place to be in a safe, padded environment for gymnastics. Uh, but of course, Tiny Tales and Storytime is happening at the Missoula Public Library starting at 10.30 a.m. today. Um, have your kids learn nine new words a day. It's a good experience to get involved with books and learning because um, 
a lot of a kid a lot of teachers expect the kids to learn to read by the time they reach school. So, yarns and watercolor is at noon today at the Missoula Public Library. If you wanted uh, stitch and stuff, great. If there's too much, if there's not enough room for uh, making your uh, scarves or whatever, um, you can go to watercolor and you can uh, paint with watercolor with Rob P. at Missoula Public Library starting at noon. Of course, uh, Missoula Senior Center, um, they host a cribbage and bridge uh, groups where people can play cribbage or bridge and maybe a little bit of both, have some lunch and engage with other people on Missoula's best dance floor. Um, and that starts around 12.30 today at Missoula Senior Center. Dog show, I just want to say that the, the dog show is continuing on this weekend as well. Uh, Thursday, they had the dog show started at 6 a.m. and it goes to 6 p.m. But pretty much every single day this, uh, this weekend, this four-day weekend of the dog show, which happens uh, today, Saturday, and on Sunday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. at the Missoula County Fairgrounds. You can't miss it. It's all happening. Uh, Pro, uh, pregnancy potions, an essential oil f event for kids. Endeavor, which is a, uh, in my in my uh, professional opinion, is a um, education co-op for kids. So a bunch of parents come together uh, who homeschool their kids and created Endeavor, which is a a private school, but also it's more of a public co-op school for parent-led education. And they hire uh, people and. Uh, and teachers to teach their kids, and they are always looking for uh, getting more money to help promote their programs and more, and also have these educational events by essential oils for kids. And this happened from 2 to 4 p.m. today, and they will have 10 roller bottle blends for each child parent combo to make. Blends include whimsically named items such as Tummy Tonic, Dream Spell, and Focus Power. And of course, you can learn about this and more uh, by go calling them at 406 471 5855 to reserve your slot or ask any questions about this event. But of course, everything else I just told you for First Friday, so let's skip on to Saturday. Saturday markets go on from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, graduation is happening for all your seniors at MCPS High School. Um, well, of course, many other graduations already happened, um, but MCPS hosts their high school at the Adams Center um, this Saturday, tomorrow, um, from about 10 a.m. to about 4 p.m. And every two hours, they have a slot for each of the high schools. They usually shuffle them around every year, so your kid will be graduating. And if you uh, also, um, yeah, and that's what's happening at the Adams Center. If you have very coarse veins, they have very coarse vein assessment happening at the Missoula Surgical Associates. This is a free, free vein assessment. If you have a very coarse vein and you maybe you s on your legs and you see some veins popping out and you're saying, um, uh, maybe I should check this out. Or maybe if you just suffer from leg pains, aching or cramping, it's a good way to uh, find out if you have these kind of pains or whatnot. Um, so this happens from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. You can call them at 542. 7525 to reserve your spot. Again, that number is 542-7525. Library Rock Summer Reading Program begins at the Missoula Public Library. They kick off their summer starting on Saturday, June 2nd, and it goes until August 19th. All books must be, uh, of course, this is a reading thing, so encourage your kids to read. Uh, select number of books, and if you read those books by... Uh, uh, all, of course, if you read those books and make logs of these books, you are eligible to win prizes through the Missoula Public Library. You can go to missoulapubliclibrary.org for more information. Predator feeding is happening at the Missoula Insectarium starting at 1 in the afternoon, uh, 1 and 2.30 p.m. They will be feeding a cricket to our predators. Um, join us as they explain the demonstrate how predators capture and consume their prey. Come see who is hungry today at the Missoula Insectarium. You can go to missoulabutterflyhouse.org for more information. Of course, open hour at the Makerspace at 3 p.m. in the afternoon until it closes at the Missoula Public Library tomorrow afternoon. But here are some of your late night events that are happening for Friday night. If you guys are going out, you got Moonlight Moss. It's painting with a twist. Um, it's classes. Um, if you want to learn some painting and stuff, Dead Man is going to be a film at the Roxy. Mudslide Charlie, Mudslide Charlie will be playing at the Union Club. It's a good way for some live music and dancing happening at the Union Club. Magpies is going to be at the Top Hat Lounge. There's going to be some rock music. And another thing that's happening on Saturday, from what I've noticed, is uh, that they're going to be doing a couple other things. Uh, Top Hat Lounge is doing some country music uh, called The Band of Drifters, Saturday night. Russ Nasset, Nasset and the Revelator is going to be the Union Club. Um, absolutely, Chris Moon will be at the Bat Lander at 9 p.m., but there's plenty of other events 
by going on to missoulaevents.net. Find out what's happening in your area in Missoula by going on to missoulaevents.net. But that pretty much does it for me. Thank you guys for joining me. I want to thank once again Gary Gillette, uh, the director of the Missoula City Band, for joining me this morning and talking about his book and this upcoming season of the Missoula City Band, which starts on June 20th, officially, according to him. But of course, they'll have a concert on June 13th and every subsequent Wednesday until August 15th, all starting at 8 p.m. every Wednesday in June, July, and August. So. Join them then, and it's going to be at Bonner Park. So without further ado, I want to thank you guys for joining me this morning. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Mm-hmm.